This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different extracts. At the start of each extract, you'll hear this sound. You'll have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you'll hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you'll have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions one to twenty-four, complete the notes with the information you hear. Now look at the notes for extract one. Extract one, questions one to twelve. You hear a neurologist talking to a patient called Vincent Chung. For questions one to twelve, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have thirty seconds to look at the notes. Now, Vincent, I've got your referral notes from your GP, but I wonder if you could tell me in your own words how this all started, um, what treatment you've had, how that's gone, and uh, anything else you think I should know. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, well, it all started about three months ago.、Uh, I was just washing one morning, and everything was completely normal. When suddenly I felt a pain go right across my face, but for no apparent reason. Then after that, the attacks came quite often. If I had to describe it, I'd say it's like a searing pain, and it usually hits the right side of my face. Like I said, it goes right across it, but it's my cheek, teeth, and my jaw that seem to take the brunt of it. It's a horrible feeling too.、Mm. It feels like an electric shock. I have to say, it leaves me feeling quite shaken. And have you noticed any patterns or triggers? Is there anything that seems to bring this on? Well,、um, like I told you, the first time it happened, I was washing my face, but now I notice that brushing my teeth and shaving also bring it on. It seems to be anything to do with touching my face. I mean, even the wind can cause a sudden attack of pain, and also just using my face or mouth can bring one on too. So. I mean, like just eating and drinking can cause one, or smiling at something suddenly, or for a long time. Basically, anything fun, pleasurable, or necessary seems to cause me horrendous pain. And do you think that the conditions developed or changed in any way since your first attack? Oh, they're definitely happening more often. And not only that, it feels like they're affecting my whole face. At the beginning, the attacks probably only lasted about what? Thirty seconds or so, but nowadays I find myself dealing with the really painful part of the attack for a few minutes at a time, and it's actually getting severe now. I used to be able to cope with the pain by clenching my fist or talking myself through it or whatever, but I can't now. And I see here that your GP prescribed you some medication. Has that helped at all? Well, I expect you can see on my notes what I'm on. My doctor was reluctant to give me anti-convulsants at first because apparently there are one or two that can cause serious reactions. Yes.、Yeah. But he found one that carried a very low risk, so I was on that for a time.、Um, anyway, after a while, they started to lose their effect. So then he put me on antispasmodics. That's what I'm on now.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's relevant, but I also take supplements:、uh, cod liver oil and vitamin D. Okay. How are the antispasmodics working out for you? Well, I have to admit that when I take them, the pain is a bit more bearable, but they do affect me in other ways. I mean, I'm I'm drowsy all the time. I can hardly keep my eyes open, and just trying to follow a conversation or remember what it is I'm supposed to be doing has become a challenge. It really doesn't take much to make me confused. I mean, it's embarrassing.
So, to avoid people thinking I've completely lost it or whatever, I've ended up staying at home a lot of the time. Oh dear. Now, that's something I've never done. And I think it's that more than the pain which has led to some very strange mood swings. I mean, that's not really like me, Doctor. I see. Well, from what you've been saying, it sounds like we need to book you in for some tests and explore the possibility that... Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. You hear a pulmonologist talking to a patient called Pam Herbert. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. And now, uh, Pam, I see you've been referred to me by your GP, and I've got your notes here, but uh, perhaps we could start by you telling me, uh, in your own words, about the symptoms you've been having, any treatment you've had, how that's gone, and uh, anything else you feel I should know. Well, to be honest, I've just been feeling absolutely terrible. I've got this awful cough that just won't go away, no matter what I do, and I keep coughing up all this stuff. It's sort of brown. Mm -hmm. It looks horrible. And the cough's much worse at night, so, of course, that's been interfering with my sleep. So I'm what you would probably call fatigued all the time. I feel like I have to try to get through every day rather than live it. It doesn't help that, weirdly, I'm just not hungry at the moment either. I'm really off my food, and that's led to me losing weight, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> but it's not helping with my energy levels. Are you otherwise well? I mean, have you noticed any other changes in your health? Well, one quite big thing is that I'm finding it difficult to walk very far. I can manage short distances, but if it's going to take longer than 10 minutes, you can forget it. Okay. And then just a few little aches and pains, but they can be annoying. Mm. I've noticed that my rib cage feels really painful when I've been laughing. It's agony. And recently I've been getting this sort of oh, feeling down my right arm. Okay. It's like a tingling feeling, I suppose. I can't use my arm at all when it's like that. And um, how long would you say that all this has been going on? Oh, quite a few months. It all started when I had flu back in January. So about nine months ago, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That quickly turned into glandular fever, and I was ill for a good six weeks with that. I don't even feel like I've fully recovered now. And then I've had one or two quite nasty chest infections lately and they've been difficult to shift. Well, that's certainly something we can look into. Um, I see you're a smoker. Uh, how long have you smoked, Pam? Well, in total, I, I was working this out with my husband the other day. It's about 35 years. I know that sounds bad, but it hasn't been constant. I have quit quite a few times, and it's just that I always go back to it. I've always suffered from insomnia, on and off anyway, and giving up always makes that so bad. Mm -hmm. It means I can't function properly because I'm so sleep-deprived. One of the reasons I'd like to give up cigarettes forever, though, is to get my sense of smell back. You know, that went about 10 years ago. It's amazing how much you miss it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realise how much pleasure it gave me. It affects so many different aspects of your life. And as far as current medication is concerned? Well, for about 10 years now, I've been taking a statin, um... 
Oh, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> don't, don't worry. And I'm still using my salbutamol inhaler. I take that everywhere I go. I find I get out of breath so easily and I do tend to panic. And I'm still on the antidepressants I was prescribed a year ago. They seem to be working really well. <laughs> so I don't want to change anything there. It's all good, apart from the obvious worry and inconvenience with this cough and everything. And any allergies? Well, I never drink milk. It makes me throw up. And years ago, my GP diagnosed an intolerance, which came as quite a relief. And I don't know if it counts as an allergy, but hay fever always makes me really miserable. I literally can't go outside. I just stay indoors with the windows shut and take my medicine.